Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Finishing Touch, a podcast giving advice to the next generation of American soccer talent. My name is Riley James. Today's show is sponsored by Steezy. From comfort to function, Steezy with their brand new React No Show and Adapt Essential Crew. Steezy, the athletic sock for you. Keep moving forward. I'm with Mr. James Hope, VP of Urban Champion Academy down in San Antonio, Texas. James, how you doing, man? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes, uh, I thank you for making time. You you run a fantastic program down there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Urban Champion Academy? Well, the Urban Champion Academy has been around for we're in our 11th year of existence, and basically we work with a lot of the inner city uh, players from San Antonio to give them opportunities uh, not only to play soccer but to transform their lives uh, and get out of generational poverty. So. We allow them to be able to we work on college sessions and getting uh, guest speakers to come work on writing projects and help them with their financial aid and speaking with college coaches. And so uh, we give them opportunities to really make a difference in their lives. So you told me that through this program, the, the class of 2002, you put 13 of 18 eligible players into college soccer. Can you talk about correct. maybe the developmental process of getting those guys ready to play at the next level? Well, the first thing is, and you know, a lot of times uh, student athletes think that, you know, I'm a pretty decent player. I can, I, I'm pretty good, and they look at me play. I scored this amount of goals, and I'm, I'm a fantastic guy. But when it comes to college soccer, it's all about the grades. All right, it's the most important thing that that this a student athlete can think about is if they want to play at college level, the grades are important. And it's not just about my junior year or my senior year. It's more about how do we get to that point that our freshman grades count, all right? A student athlete that is a junior this year uh, has already half of its credits and its GPA settled already. So we have to start thinking that all these grades matter. If you talk to any college coach, the first thing out of their mouth are two things. What's your GPA? And have you taken the SAT? And then what do you like to do? So these are the type of things that you've got to do first. College. Uh, programs in NCAA have 9.9 scholarships, right? So that's basically, that's roughly, do the math, it's 10 scholarships. The average club is a college team is taking anywhere from 30 to 35 players. So how do they split that up? It's going to be portions. So it's all going to be a lot of this uh, opportunity to get the money available, play college soccer, is going to come from the academic side. So if you're looking for that full ride uh, on the athletic side, not too many of them out there. Right, and that's something we forget a lot of the time is the the actual academics with student athletes. You know, we talk about they're playing the field all the time. We criticize, you know, whether it be college football players, college basketball players, or even college soccer players about their play in the field. These are still student athletes. So you've obviously run a fantastic program. A uh, hundred of your, a hundred percent of your players are eligible to get into college. Over the last, what was that stat? A hundred percent of, of what year? This past year? That we've been tracking. We said that we haven't been doing it. We first we just started as a rec program here in San Antonio, and as it grew, we saw the need that we needed to transform the lives. So we worked really hard on understanding that. So like even tomorrow, our players uh, don't. We have no games tomorrow for our our players. They are going to be at a college chat session all day with different speakers to work on uh, financial aid to work on writing college coaches' emails and work on, uh, you know, looking at scholarships because it's a, it said it's quite expensive, especially here in Texas. Uh, there are very few, for the boys' side, there are very few uh, public uh, institutions that college soccer. So you're looking at thirty-five dollars to $55,000 a year just for tuition. So you need to be able to find ways to pay, to, uh, pay that, and so you need to look on your academic side. Now, now, if mom or dad can write a check for 50000 a year, then you're probably in good shape at least to get a, a look-see. But if, if it's coming down to those, you're going to need to make sure that you have the academic side in place. Right. So 100% into college and 87, 87% into four-year universities. Obviously, you're doing something right down there in San Antonio. Uh, what is the, the future of this? To, to spread this or to just keep it contained and maybe grow it in the San Antonio area? Well, I said, you know, we, we're right now focused in on what we can do in San Antonio and our numbers keep growing. We run several different leagues. We run all the way from three years old all the way up to 19. Uh, 
we're looking possibly at a uh, semi-professional league going on in the future to be able to uh, supplement those players that are staying home. But uh, certainly it, this model is uh, an opportunity across the country to be able to break into the inner city clubs. As we know, with many of the, uh, of the other pay-to-play models out there, that it can get quite expensive. You know, some clubs charging $3,000 a year plus travel expenses. So we try to offset that. Uh, our players pay no more than $250 for the whole year, uniform included. So, but we think the model is, uh, is a possibility. Sustainability makes it tough. You know, uh, as other clubs have talked to me about how do you make it work? Well, you have to sell yourself. And it's not selling that the, the next Neymar is coming through our program. It's about uh, most uh, sponsors don't care about that. What they do care is what you're going to do for the community. How you're going to how you're going to make a better employee for me. Those type of things. So when you start looking for ways to be able to build that mind, body, and soul of the player, you're going to be able to help sustain this because it. We all know it's expensive. It's expensive to run a program. You know, we have a six thousand to eight thousand dollar water bill each month at our fields. You know, so that's just something simple to talk about. Yeah, that's something a lot of people don't think about. It's just the water bill, what it takes yeah. to keep those fields we quality. We found that out as soon as we got, it. We got our fields from the city. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're in charge now. All you got to do is mow them and, and water. Oh, okay, how hard can that be? <laughs> when the first bill came out, it was $9,000. You know, oh. So, yeah. You know, but it's, but yeah, it's no, like I said, you know, I said it's, it's making that sustainability. And I think that's with a lot of inner city type programs. Uh, they, they work well for a while, and then they realize it's, not that easy to uh, fundraise. And it's a, really a lot of time spent on what are you doing outside of the soccer community to, to make it happen. And when you're doing things to support kids, break out of that generational poverty and to become productive citizens within the community, then there's a little bit more support. So uh, yes, uh, to go back to your comment, I do believe that this is something that can be, this grassroots can be, uh, spread out across the country and there are some great programs out here america scores in uh san francisco and in dc is a great program soccer in the streets is another program uh, out of atlanta uh there are a lot of good programs that are doing quite similar projects and uh it is it is a pathway to uh to really changing the game here in the united states as far as the actual soccer on the pitch you're running these seven seven v seven leagues uh do you see the the benefit to those kind of smaller type atmospheres to maybe get more coaching or as far as like player development? We we do both. I mean, we have a we have premier teams that are playing in our, our top levels here in San Antonio. Uh, so th those are our 11 v 11 type of programs. But we also run a 7 v 7 league for our high schools. And so it allows a lot of the kids that maybe can't even afford the $250. We only charge them $35. They come out on and they play basically with their high school friends and play in a 7v7 league. So it gets them the opportunity to see what our program is about. They are all eligible to go to any of our other uh, college sessions and such. We offer them some of the same benefits and many then switch over to the to the bigger program. But the 77 model is, is a great opportunity for players who uh, may not be ready to make that full commitment and travel outside of San Antonio. Our, our premier teams do travel across the state. Right. I want to go back to, to just one thing for a moment. The, the traveling and, and, and keeping these kids like involved and on the road. Have you seen a, I don't know, of a, of a trend with these, these kids who are on these premier teams and on these, these traveling teams, have you seen them, develop nicely with as far as handling a bunch of different things as far as their education but also traveling do, do you think that might have a uh, a benefit to their career beyond soccer or beyond high school well, most definitely because as i said one of the challenges that we always have is for our, many of our student athletes to consider teams outside of san antonio or even outside of texas and so getting them to when we travel across the state and they get an opportunity to see other cities and many of our you know uh, players have never even left san antonio and so for the ability to go to houston for a tournament or dallas to a tournament or louisiana uh we've been invited to go to a tournament in las vegas this uh summer and so uh, we're looking into doing that and so it gets them an opportunity to see different things and 
it's it broadened their minds and both on our boy side and our girl side. And so we think that's a great opportunity for them to see the world in a different light that they never thought of seeing before. Where can people find you uh, to be able to look into? Cause I, I know that the state soccer network has contacts and people that, that are involved in the site down in San Antonio, where can people get in more information and maybe even join the league? Well, the easiest way would be to go to our urban champions Academy dot org that's our website uh we're also on facebook and twitter uh and instagram but urban champions academy dot org as uh it's a new website we're just putting together because we just changed our name we used to be urban soccer leadership academy but uh we lost out on a two million dollar grant uh because uh that 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 found foundation did not sponsor youth program youth sports program and so, as I said, by taking the word soccer out, it uh, allows us to say, we do a lot of things. And I said, go, going back to the college of wellness and the mind, body, and soul that we work on with uh, social, emotional learning. And so when that's all added to the uh, mix, then, you know, those grants are, are open up to us. So we had to make a change. So our website is just in development, but it does have the basic details in which to uh, be able to get in touch with us. So I have to ask, I've covered the Houston Dynamo for four years now, and I've been heavily involved with Texas soccer. The now three professional teams, I, just curiosity is running oh, through me right now. Oh, we have a San Antonio team. It's just not in MLS. Oh, yeah. and that's that's a sore subject, but I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. I These was on three, the to bring MLS to San Antonio. So. Oh. Hey, there's still going to be a chance to go to San Antonio pretty soon. I think we're going well, past we, 30. We, we feel there's a lot of uh, good things going. Uh, you know, soccer in San Antonio continues to grow. Uh, I've been to the Austin FC games. I've been I've been season ticket holders in the past for FC Dallas and Houston Dynamo. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a great uh, opportunity for, for San Antonio and, and for Texas. And we're going to be seeing some more teams. Uh, stay tuned for uh, a couple new uh, professional teams to be coming in to uh, possibly Corpus Christi and Fort Worth in the next, maybe announced uh, as early as in the end of this year. The question I was going to get to is these these kids, obviously down in San Antonio, a lot of them may love Mexican clubs, but do you see a trend and a pattern with their favorite MLS club in Texas, whether it be Austin, Dallas, or Houston? Oh yeah, I mean, as I said, we definitely have seen that. Many of our, uh, we've had two of our players who have been training with San Antonio FC and uh, we had one player two years ago who was uh, part of the, who spent some time with the uh, Dynamo Academy uh, in Houston because uh, he was part of the Olympic Development Program. Because we had, uh, two years ago, we had seven players on the state Olympic team and uh, two of them made the regional team, went to Costa Rica to play. So, you know, we, we've been able to see that there's a huge interest in Major League Soccer in, in Texas and it continues to grow. And so there's this, you know, pattern that we're just starting to see that uh, players are interested more in looking at that at pathway from MLS. Absolutely. Hey, well, James, thank you so much for the time. And uh, remind us one more time of the website that people can go check you guys out on. It's urbanchampionsacademy.org. All right, go check that out. Uh, thank you so much for the time, James. Enjoyed it. Thank you again. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Show. We all really appreciate it here at the State Soccer Network. You can check out more information on our website, statesoccernetwork.com, to sign up your local high school soccer team for events and contests to win prizes, as well as check out local street games in your area. You can check out our socials as well, at State Soccer Network on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks so much for watching the show, and as always, keep supporting local soccer.